There's no happily ever after here. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 saddest teen movie endings. For this list, we're looking at the most devastating conclusions to movies about teenagers. While the characters in movies like Titanic are technically teenagers, it's more of an epic disaster movie than a teen movie, so it won't be making the list. I'll never let go. I promise. <laughs> because of the nature of the list, be ready for some serious spoilers. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. The seconds you could kill, I'm here. There's no need to be scared of me. Number 10, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Based on the beloved young adult novel by Stephen Chbosky, who also wrote and directed this film adaptation, The Perks of Being a Wallflower is a movie that deals with heavy topics like teenage depression and mental illness. Candace, I killed Aunt Helen, didn't I? She died getting my birthday present, so I guess I killed her, right? I've tried to stop thinking that, but I can't. She keeps driving away and dying. Call the police and send them to my house. In a twist near the end of the film, however, we find out that the main character, Charlie, was sexually abused by his aunt when he was a child and that he blames himself for her sudden death. This revelation causes him to have a mental breakdown, and while he does eventually return home, there is a bittersweet sadness to the conclusion of the story. And you're listening to that song on that drive with the people you love most in this world. And in this moment, I swear, we are infinite. Number 9, The Maze Runner. For the duration of the story told in The Maze Runner, the main character has no memory of his life before he arrived in the Glade. I'm sure by now you must all be very confused, angry, frightened. I can only assure you that everything that's happened to you, everything we've done to you, it was all done for a reason. It's only at the end of the movie that we find out what brought all of these young people together. It turns out that a solar flare occurred, causing a widespread devastation on Earth and killing many. You won't remember, but the sun has scorched our world. Billions of lives lost to fire, famine, suffering on a global scale. Even worse, in the aftermath of the natural disaster, a pandemic that was dubbed the Flare killed many more. Thomas and the others learned that they were part of an experiment, and that it's not over yet. Number 8, If I Stay. I'll do whatever you want. Just please stay. You're my home, Mia. I don't care where we are, I just care that we're together. This heartbreaking movie, based on the 2009 novel, tells the story of Mia, a young girl who gets into a disastrous car accident which kills her family and leaves her with life-threatening injuries. We see much of the story take place in flashbacks, as Mia is forced to decide whether she'll stay on Earth or join her family in the afterlife. But that night, sitting around the bonfire, jamming with Adam and everyone else, I realized I was wrong. The cello isn't a solo instrument. It's part of something bigger. It's a bleak premise, and the ending is pretty soul-crushing until the very moment that she opens her eyes, letting the audience know that she has finally made the decision to stay. Mia. Number 7, Call Me By Your Name. Call Me By Your Name isn't your typical teen romance movie, largely because only one of the members of the central couple is a teenager. I like the way you say things. I don't know why you're always putting yourself down, though. So you won't, I guess? You really that afraid of what I think? This touching story follows young Elio, who is spending the summer in Italy with his family when he meets the 24-year-old grad student Oliver, and the two fall in love. Call me by your name and I'll call you by mine. Elio? This relationship had a lot working against it, and the audience knew it was doomed to end in heartbreak. But the final scene after Oliver goes home, where Elio just stares into the fire crying, is nearly impossible to watch. Video? Video? 
Number six, me and Earl and the dying girl. It's not exactly what I wanted to say to you. But, whatever. Let's just watch this first, okay? Sometimes you know from the title of a movie that it isn't going to have a happy ending. But that doesn't make it any easier to deal with. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl ends with Rachel dying, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise, as we know that she has leukemia. That was the last time I saw Rachel. She went into a coma shortly after that and died about 10 hours later. I know I told you she doesn't die. And I'm sorry. Deep down, somehow, I didn't think she would. But she did. But watching Greg show up at the hospital and give her a private screening of the film he made left us all choked up. And the following scenes at her funeral and hearing about the letter she wrote to his college is almost too much to handle. Goodbye, Greg. You're a good friend. Although if you don't go to college, you're also an idiot. But you already knew that. Love, Rachel. Number five, Bridge to Terabithia. The novel Bridge to Terabithia was published in the 70s, so many people already know about the heartbreaking event that takes place near the end of the story, but it's still terrible to watch in the movie version, which stars a young Josh Hutcherson as Jess. See ya! Yeah, see ya! Jess and his friend Leslie create an imaginary world together, but this is no simple fantasy story. Seemingly out of nowhere, Jess gets the news that Leslie has been killed in an accident when the rope swing that they used together broke and she drowned in the creek. Your friend Leslie's dead. She drowned in a creek this morning. Apparently she tried to swing across on a rope and it broke. They think she hit her head. Jess's disbelief and grief force him to grow up fast, and it makes us wish the innocence of childhood could last forever. But you gotta look really hard. But keep your mind wide open. Number four, The Fault in Our Stars. And, and, and how are you doing? Uh, you mean besides the terminal cancer? All right, I guess. In a movie about two teens living with cancer, you can probably guess that the ending won't be a happy one. Hazel Grace, they don't actually hurt you unless you light them. Hmm? I never lit one. It's a metaphor, see? You put the thing that does the killing right between your teeth but you never give it the power to kill you. Hazel and Augustus meet at a cancer support group, and throughout their relationship, Gus seems relatively healthy, whereas Hazel undergoes numerous health scares. The viewer is left assuming that she will die, leaving him behind, but in the end, the opposite takes place, with his health rapidly deteriorating. God. Do I want more days for Augustus Waters than what he got? Yeah. But Gus. I cannot tell you how thankful I am for our little infinity. The final scene involves Hazel reading the eulogy that Gus wrote for her, and trust us when we say that there's no way you can finish this movie without tears in your eyes. You don't get to choose if you get hurt in this world, but you do have a say in who hurts you. And I like my choices. I hope she likes hers. Okay, Hazel Grace? Okay. Number three, Five Feet Apart. If you're looking for the next The Fault in Our Stars, look no further than Five Feet Apart, released in 2019. Following the formula of sick teens fall in love, this story is about Stella and Will, two young people living with cystic fibrosis. Hey, look, I get that you have some kind of save the world hero complex going on, but can you leave me out of it? These meds are not optional. Yeah, that's probably why they keep shoving them down my throat. You're making me crazy. The two can't be physically close to each other because of the risk of cross-infection. Five feet apart. Real? Are you in? I'm so in. Their relationship is one filled with risks, but in the end, Stella begins to get healthier while Will realizes that his days are numbered. I don't know what comes next, but I don't regret 
any of this. Could you close your eyes? I just don't know if I can walk away if you're still looking at me. In the final scene, he asks her not to look at him so that he can walk away and prevent her from mourning his eventual death. I love you. So much. Number two, Romeo and Juliet. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Romeo, doff thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee thy word. One of the saddest teen movie endings is also one of the most tragic endings in the history of fiction. William Shakespeare's beloved tragic play Romeo and Juliet is known for the heartbreaking ending in which the two lovers both take their own lives, thinking that the other is dead. My love? My wife? Death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Are not conquered. In Baz Luhrmann's 1996 version, it's made even more devastating by the fact that Julia actually wakes up as Romeo is taking the poison and he sees her, realizing the mistake he has made. Dateless bargain to engrossing death. Our number one pick is a real tearjerker, but before we get to our heartbreaking top pick, here are a few honorable mentions that never fail to get the tears flowing. Sebastian. <laughs> I, I love you, Annette. I love you too. Pony boy, I asked the nurse to give you this book so you could finish it. It's worth saving those little kids. Their lives are worth more than mine. They have more to live for. Tell Dally I think it's worth it. I'm gonna miss you guys. Maybe for you there's a tomorrow. Maybe for you there's 1,000. Or 3,000. Or 10. But for some of us, there's only today. Even though our time together was short, the stars have been burning for every moment of it. And the light from those moments will be shining down for the next thousand years. But I have alone. You can go now. You can go. Bye, Tess. Warm if you like. I don't mind. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1, A Walk to Remember. We didn't realize just how many movies there are about teenagers with cancer. I wonder will you hear my prayer? I know I'm not worthy, but I need one of the original examples is 2002's A Walk to Remember starring Mandy Moore. Jamie and Landon seem to have nothing in common. He's a bad boy and she's the minister's daughter. What do you want, Carter? I've known you for years. You've never been the first one to come up and say hello. I need help with my lines. Landon Carter's asking me for help? Yeah. Okay, I'll pray for you. When they're forced to work together, she hides the fact that she's dying of leukemia from him. In the end, they get married before she succumbs to her illness, and while all of that makes us grab for our tissues, it's Landon's speech about Jamie that has us sobbing uncontrollably. Jamie saved my life. She taught me everything. About life, hope, and the long journey ahead. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.